Hey folks, Nick Mock 007 here again. So I know a lot of you have been complaining about the scientific and technical nature of my videos. Well, I think half of you are understanding them just fine. Uh, half of you are not giving yourself enough credit and the other half of you are probably smarter than me. But now I'm actually making all my transcripts available for these videos. So I uh, just look at the options below the video and you can go back and reread any part that sounds confusing. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier that way. Now, I know some of the big words are intimidating, but if we all want to grow in the hobby, we got to keep pushing each other. We need to look at the science to inform our decisions and not just rely on old habits. Uh, I know old habits die hard, but for those of you who've been around long enough, uh, remember what your aquarium looked like 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Aren't you glad the science of the aquarium uh, hobby has progressed? All right, so I'm off my soapbox here, and today, ironically enough, I've got a video that won't be confusing at all. Uh, we're gonna look at controlling the amount of CO2 in your tank, and my goal is not to give you a primer on how to, uh, but before I talk about a really innovative product that offers better control than anything else uh, consumer grade that I've ever seen, uh, I do wanna briefly review the current methods for controlling and monitoring CO2 in the planet tank. And uh, just so we're clear, uh, actually, the only kind of CO2 I'm talking about today is, is pressurized system. Okay, so first we've got the classic drop checker, which is just a monitoring method. Now, without me going into how a drop checker works, um, which we can do another time if folks are interested, the problem with the drop checker is that it's just plain inaccurate. It's very slow to respond to the uh, CO2 changes in the water. In fact, it can take two or three hours for the indicator solution to change which means you never have a current reading of the CO2 in your tank due to this lag. Additionally, you have to figure out what color green is the right color green, and no two people are gonna read that exactly the same. So again, just a lot of room for error there. So next we've got the solenoid on a timer, and this is a controller, and all it does is automatically turn the CO2 on when the lights are on and off during darkness, just that simple. Uh, there's no control over the amount of flow, it's either on or off. But of course you already have a predetermined flow rate set by that needle valve. Okay, so finally we've got the high-tech controller, uh, and this is the pH controller. And from what I've seen, the more popular models are uh, the Milwaukee model and the American Marine model. Uh, now, I love high-tech electronics. Uh, I pretty much, you know, if any gizmo gadget comes out, I, I gotta get it, or at least I know about it if it's not affordable. So it might surprise you to know that I actually think these pH controllers are completely unnecessary and not particularly helpful. And in fact, I'm not the only one. Uh, here's a quote I'm gonna paraphrase from Tom Barr. When he was asked about using a pH controller, he said, I do not use them, waste of time uh, and money in my opinion. But let me explain a little bit about these so you'll see why this new product that I came across is a better option. And at the simplest level, you know, when CO2 dissolves in the tank, it lowers your pH. So the theory goes that when the pH drops to whatever level you've set on that pH controller, it'll shut off the CO2 by closing that solenoid we talked about earlier. But the pH in the water doesn't track the level of the CO2 instantly either. Just like the drop checker, there's a lag and any controller has to allow the pH to swing up and down a little bit. Uh, otherwise, it would continually hunt, you know, turning on and off every few seconds, which really wouldn't work well at all. And as far as I know, all pH controllers have one on setting and then a different off setting to avoid this hunting up and down. Okay, additionally, some folks seem to think that that pH swing uh, from adding CO2 is harmful to your fish, so that kind of drives them to use these pH controllers. But the reality is that the pH changes that occur from adding CO2 uh, and that CO2 dissolving in the water uh, really have not been found to be harmful to fish at all. So again, that seems to be, uh, it seems to me that the pH controller is largely unnecessary. And finally, while some folks use tables to calculate CO2 based on pH and KH, the truth is that you can't act, uh, excuse me, accurately determine uh, how much CO2 is in your typical aquarium by measuring pH and KH. There's really too many other variables. So honestly, with all the amazing technology we have, the best method is really to use your eyes and your brain. It just takes some careful trial and error. Just keep bumping up that CO2 until you see any signs of distress in your fish and then back it off a bit. And my advice is to never adjust the CO2 higher without being around to watch. 
that's a recipe for disaster. And if you've got good surface movement, your plants are growing and purling, and you've got the light set right, then you're golden. But what about all my OCD uh, fish keeping friends out there who really want to precisely hit that 30 uh, parts per million of CO2 in their tank? Is there nothing we can do? Well, I know I told you about uh, that fish tank on wheels uh, Kickstarter project. Uh, today I'm bringing you another Kickstarter project. This one I'm a bit more serious about and uh, I won't insert any clips from that lest YouTube give me another copyright warning. Uh, okay, well an enterprising aquatic nursery owner um, has designed an affordable way to directly measure CO2 in your tank. So if you were thinking of buying a pH controller, uh, get ready to change your plans because with this, um, I can really see no reason for any of us to ever buy a pH controller for CO2 again. Okay, I'm going to put a few links in the description below. Uh, the first one is to that Kickstarter page, uh, so you can actually go and see the device. The second one is a link to the YouTube video about that device. And then the third one is going to be um, a link to a forum thread uh, where this is being discussed. And better yet, the inventor is also a part of that discussion uh, and has been answering questions about this product. So if you're actually interested and you've got questions, that's a great place to go to get your questions answered. Now, from my reading, uh, the way the OCO, which is the name of that product, uh, works is through the same basic principle as a drop checker. So CO2 from the aquarium will diffuse out of the tank, and it will diffuse out uh, through that, uh, the probe membrane on this device, and inside, and then it'll go inside the detector chamber, um, which is a part of the meter. As the gas builds up, the detector measures light absorbance and calculates how much CO2 is in the chamber, and then from that calculates how much CO2 is in the tank. But this is much faster than a drop checker because the CO2 gas does not have to redissolve into the uh, 4DKH uh, bromothymol blue solution and the CO2 detector is a much more sensitive instrument. Now, additionally, with pH controllers, you have to uh, calibrate the probes regularly, which costs money, and you technically should replace their probe annually, which I know everyone doesn't do, but that would also cost money. Now with the OCO, all of that goes out the interesting, uh, excuse me, all of that goes out the window, which is the interesting part to me. You do have to calibrate it periodically, but you do it with the air in your house, which the last time I checked was free. Uh, so if you're looking for an automated, highly reliable method to control your CO2 and prevent gassing your fish, you really ought to look into the OCO. Now, I just wanted to spread the word a bit um, and give this Kickstarter a, a little bit of attention. Well, I still will be relying on my eyes and brain and, uh, you know, the low tech method uh, for folks out there who are new to pressurized CO2, uh, worried about gassing their fish or who just want the ultimate in um, either precision or monitoring, because I believe you can hook this device up to a, a computer and actually get graphs of your pH. Uh, this is a really uh, precision, affordable uh, instrument. So here's your chance. Go support a fellow hobbyist and back his project. Now, I hope everyone had a really great holiday weekend, and I will see you next week.